today we're going to show you how to make an outdoor rocket stove for just five hours of your time and a hundred dollars. Do you jump in? Yeah. <laughs> Just a bit of a disclaimer, obviously we're not professionals. If you do want to do this, we highly recommend checking in on some of the safety things with someone that might know best. If you really want to do this, do keep hanging tight because the second half of this video is some detailed explanation from Tim about exactly how this works and some of the things you really do need to know. He's also super happy to answer all of your questions over on Facebook and Instagram. So we're kicking off the day by doing some handcrafted trials to make sure we've got the absolute best mix of clay, hay and sand. Let's see how excited Tim is. I'm so excited. You've been wanting to do this for ages eh? So we've tried clay from three different areas in our farm and the best brick by far is the clay that is actually right next to our hot tub. So sweet! Butchers that I left to get a bit too vinegary, I think. Oh. <laughs> Damn, it's super fizzy. It's like fizzy vinegar. I know this looks pretty wasteful, but I've got quite a lot of litres of some butcher that I've accidentally left a bit too long. And I use it in all of my cleaning and on my hair. So, really don't need that bottle. So, these water bottles are awesome because they really insulate the whole thing from the cold from the earth. But you do need to kind of make sure that you've got a nice flat layer. A little bit of mortar on the bricks there. Because that's because the bricks are, it's, these are going to have to hold a bit of weight with the brick on top, whereas everything else is not going to be as heavy. This was the first of 10 mixes throughout the day. Now we started out with stomping, which is how we've worked with earth mixes before but by the end of the day we had an amazing technique so keep your eyes peeled for that. We're going to just repeat that whole process again in order to cover the whole of the base with that layer of earth. The support crew has rocked up now and they're here helping us. We have Pat. And we have Amy. And we have Ellie. And now it's just going to go super fast, I reckon. You're doing the next basically. Our amazing base layer is now complete. We've got some glass bottles which insulate the whole thing from the ground below. We've also got a corrugated iron sheet which stops the water from the earth being drawn up and we've got a super thick firm layer of our own earth mix on top of that. This little bit is where we're going to light the fire eventually. We're doing a copper plumbing now which is the, the things inside this that are going to make it magically awesome and heat the water. 
the copper needs to be coiled really carefully and smoothly so that the water can flow freely around it. The two ends inside the hot tub need to be submerged under the water for the thermocycling to work. So it's looking great. We've got, Tim has built this up. So you've got the coils in there and the water is going to go round and around those coils and it's going to get boiling hot because there's going to be flames directly on those coils. And, but right now, the stage we're at, we're going to put this ply straight on top of the coils and then we're going to pile loads of this clay, just like wash it right on top. the whole of this bit and we're still going to do a few more insulating layers. So this is the insulating layer, heaps more hay as you can see, so much more hay. More hay hay? It's like hay to the hay to the hay hay. <laughs> ha hay. Ha hay. Luckily no one's got the plumbers crack going on, that would be embarrassing. No plumber's crack. At least you'd have to like pixelate it. I actually do have a plumber's crack though right now, but it's just under my dress. <laughs> but it is quite funny because I do have one. I can feel I can feel it all hanging out. Bit of a race against the clock with these final layers of insulation. We're about to light the fire. Oh my gosh. Feels exciting, eh, Tim? It's actually really dark now. Okay, so we've covered up this chimney with the idea that it's going to start coming out of that chimney. Come on that chimney. Come on that chimney. You can do it. You can do it that chimney. For a little moment. There goes. <gasps> oh my gosh. Oh, oh, it's coming oh, out then. No. Yay. Woohoo. It's working. There it goes that chimney. Yes. Soon. But you can kind of see that the smoke there is easing up and it is definitely starting to hung on out a lot. Well, it's definitely pulling it that way. That is cool. So it's, it's in action. Nearly, eh? It's nearly in action because I guess that fire is going to get a bit more roaring. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, now I'm just going to go get some longer steps. Once that's really done. Here we go, we're in blocking there? off this one. Uh -huh. And then it sucks on the top now, sucking down there. Okay, so it's sucking air through there and then yeah. the smoke is continuing to come out of there. That's good. Yeah. Now good we're gonna place. start sticking wood in in this entrance way. Wow. This is how this is basically how the rocket stove goes, eh? Yeah. It's the whole fandango. Hello! It's the next day, sadly, last night. It was taking a little while for the fire to be really effective. So we had to say goodbye to our friends. Hand. Well, yeah, they look fun. Yeah, so our friends had to go home before we got to go on the porch. It's a bit of a bummer. And we think that basically, because the whole thing was really wet, all of the energy of the fire went to kind of drying out the cob and stuff. But this morning we've lit it and it is cranking. So it's just hooning through wood and then the whole of this basically is just like a fire shooting through here. And you can actually hear the you water your, boiling. You can put your camera there now because there's no heat at all there and look down. So that's it cranking. And do you hear the 
the copper bubbling away, just like totally boiling. One of the really amazing things about it is that you can stand right next to it and it's like you can barely feel any heat whatsoever because it's so well insulated, the design of it, that every single atom of energy is just all in the fire. And it's now getting hotter and hotter like by the minute. Like the last five degrees of warming have happened in like 20 minutes or yeah. something. It's 33.3, we're very, very close to jumping in. Ah! It's beautiful thing, isn't it? It's beautiful, I love it. Hey, how many hours do you reckon it took? What, the heat up? No, no, the whole thing. Five hours? Yeah, if we take out that kind of like, if we take we're out We're just gonna that. pose like. <laughs> Just like, be like, <laughs> I'm gonna stay up close. Today we are gonna show you how to make this rocket stove with five hours. <laughs> with, and how much do you reckon it costs? Um, hundred bucks. With five hours of your time and one hundred dollars. Do you jump in? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Oh my goodness. And now we have this super efficient wood fired hot tub, which is something we've been trying to have for like a year. Oh yeah. And it literally did cost us $100 and took about five hours. The reason the whole setup cost us $100 is because we actually got the hot tub for free, which here in New Zealand is pretty common because they were kind of really popular in like the 90s, eh? And, and now there's just like hot tubs, like plastic hot tubs like this just like languishing on decks all over New Zealand. So keep your eyes peeled for one of those. How is it? Good. good. So good. Is it so good? Yeah. Oh. So the water's pretty brown because it's been raining around here and our water in our hot tub comes literally straight out of the stream. So if it's been raining, it gets a lot of leaf matter and stuff in it. But all of that is so good for your skin that we're actually kind of into it. So that's all good. All right, so I'm gonna say exactly how this thing is built and how it works in case people actually wanna make their own one. Some Potter friends of ours, Duncan and Shrey, got in touch after the last last one that we built and said, dudes, is like a way more efficient way to do it. Come around and we'll share a design with you. And they're pretty awesome. So I went around and spent a couple of hours with them and they gave us this design, which is this thing here. This is a wood-fired rocket stove. Once it gets going, is sucked down here once it's lit properly gets pulled through here with all the wood and it burns the wood with the wind blowing through it or the air blowing through it it passes through a cavity and that's flames will reach all the way back to here and in that we have four coils two lots of four copper coils going through it and then that hot air is drawn up through that 1.6 meter flue um, why it's so effective is that it burns the wood at such a hot temperature and no heat is lost in the process. And so all the heat, or heaps of the heat, most of the heat is transferred into that water coils. You light the flame in here with some, with some um, kindling. It starts, starts coming up here. It, it, it does start coming up here initially, but once the flame's going, you block that off and then that forces the smoke up through the whole channel. Um, the wood, and then once that's going, then we block this up. So no longer can this draw air into here, but the air is all drawn down here and sucked up up there. And that just speeds up the heating process. The flames effectively will just be like shooting along here. So those copper coils will be in the flames. Oh wow, cool. Yeah. Well, and that's an amazing And then you just drop big um, sticks like this down the top and it wow. just automatically feeds as it burns down. Wow. The layers within the, the cob kind of barrel there I guess around the around the cavity we have about 80 millimeters or 100 millimeters of of um, clay with a bit of hay and some sand it's more of a solid mass so that's effectively your chimney and then around that we have more insulated kind of material which has more hay in it and less sand and clay 
so therefore the heat is kind of like insulated in that bundle down there the really important thing to, that I found to do was to actually make sure the coils are always allowing the hot air to uh, hot water to move up through the process because you don't want hot water trapped in there that turns into steam and could risk a steam explosion because that would be awful. So the water needs to be able to flow through those coils really, really smoothly and easily so that the cold water goes in the bottom, coils up and the hot water comes out of the top. And does it, it cycles simply by heat? It's thermocycling, right? Yeah, it's it's because hot water um, rises and expands, and so it's looking for a place to go, and it, and it, and it travels upwards um, just through the whole thing. So we, there's no pump on this one. It just simply siphons itself. There's a pretty simple way we've attached it to the spa pool. We just have, uh, this pipe is attached to the outlet in the bottom of the spa pool, how you empty your spa pool. Um, it comes through and c joins into these copper pipes here. Cool. And those copper pipes begin the coiling process in that. I actually, another thing that I should say is that I, when I put the copper coils in there, I, sh I shaped it with plywood around here so that when I was building the, the cob wall, when we're building the cob wall, it actually the shape that has a slight rise towards the back here was maintained. We yeah. didn't have to think about that, it was already done. We saw that, it was cool. Yeah, and, the, and then the hot water comes out of here, and instead of just looping over the side of the spa, we've actually drilled them through here, and then it goes into where essentially the the, um, the filter was in the old spa pool system so no, no water that comes out of here ever comes directly in contact with people that are in the spa so it mixes in that filter thing first and then the water coming out of that is a, a, a safe temperature because this can be this could be boiling once it really gets cranking and obviously you don't want to boil anyone in the spa pool no ma'am not ideal mm. first time we did it it took about four to five hours to heat a whole thousand liters of water which is that's pretty cool but in every time that we've done it subsequently it's got better and better as the cob has dried out so the heat now is 100% going into the into the water that we're getting rather than drying out the cob. This um, input where the wood goes in this is a hundred millimeter gap and two bricks wide and then that goes and there's a gap equivalent underneath um, this I've done it with bricks and and mortar is because you shove the sticks in there and um, and you don't want that to break apart and you you try and really shove them in tightly eh? so there's not much air kind of going in that that bit there eh? you tell yeah me. yeah we want to fill this whole gap with wood because essentially when the fly fire is in there it's a um, it's a it's a kind of a a competition what where the hot air comes out of and we want the hot air to come out that and it's only a small space yeah like that that's 150 mil flu whereas this is obviously way bigger than 150 mil cumulatively so it's a bit that the risk is that it just comes straight out of here and doesn't go through there so if we shove heaps of wood in there then that restricts the amount of air that can flow out of here so if it's going to pick it then it picks that one so great. Plus this gets really hot and actually cr creates a vacuum. Yeah. I think that's about it. Oh, I hope people find it helpful and um, wow look it's so beautiful down there. Wow. Our cows are down there. Do you, do you know the coolest thing about this? I reckon this heats up the water faster in the spa pool than the electrical heater and plus it's entirely renewable how we do this so, so it's, cool. it feels so good um but anyway hope you found that helpful and hope you kind of are enthused to go out and build your own rocket stove water heater and make a beautiful spa pool that's all from us but what do we do we stay radical yeah <laughs> you, you you invite them to stay radical okay so <laughs> stay radical <laughs> my balls my balls my balls <laughs> Is that right? Or should I say no. different? No, that, that's so great. Okay. That's so great. You like You're so good at this, Tim. Who wants more interviews with Tim? I'm gonna like get you like give us more detail on this, Tim.
We've got to make a pizza wood stove, I reckon, now. Yeah. That's our next thing. That's our next Eat pizzas. Let's go. Pizza. Pizza. Yeah, I've got to go move some cows. Okay. Love you. Love you. Bye.